Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and crafter here on YouTube with an exploration of the Pantone Color of the Year Classic Blue. Pantone is one of many companies that chooses a trend color for the year, and Pantone chose Classic Blue 4052. Notice that there's a bunch of different blues on this one screen, and they have a bunch of different examples of blues used in context, and they're all different blues, but they're kind of a medium to dark, intense kind of blue. And I went through a huge exercise to try to find the blue that's the, the base color for all of this, and long, long, long story, but it's over on Ellen Hudson's channel. And that's also the channel where you can get this little chart that you can make for yourself of different blues with a discussion of warm and cool blues. But today on this channel, I'm going to be talking about the palette explorations from Pantone. They came up with five different colorways. These are not meant as blending colors. They're meant as colorways. A colorway is when you select a whole bunch of elements, whether it's for your living room to have accent colors or on a card where you're going to choose different colors for different portions of your image. And I made these charts for myself from their colors in four different mediums, watercolor, polychromos pencils, Prismacolor pencils, and Copics. And before I get started, don't don't get excited about this. I'm not recommending anyone make these charts. The watercolor one was a pain in the drain to do because the ink bled all over the place. So half my colors don't really look like what they ought to look like because they have sort of ink seeping into them. But there you go. I tried it because a lot of people have wanted to know why I don't have hex charts for watercolor. And this is why it's just a pain in the Drano. But on my blog, you can see JPEGs of each of my charts with all the colors in them, nice and readable. They won't be my handwritten ones. I took photographs and put text on them that you can actually read so that you can choose from these colors and not have to make your own charts. But there is a downloadable single chart with just empty spaces so you can put your own colorways in there if you want with whatever your mediums are you choose. But I don't recommend doing that and you'll hear why as I talk about it. And I colored all of mine in these different mediums because I wanted to have them handy. I'm going to put them in a notebook that I access all the time so that they're right in front of me and I remember to use some of these colorways. I get stuck in a rut and I use the same colorways all the time. And in order to break out of that and try doing something different in the making of this video, I already learned something new and came up with some new things that I'm kind of excited about. So I'll just put that out there for you so you know why I'm doing this as opposed to yet having another color chart because no one needs this chart. Yes, it's pretty. Just print out mine so that you can use them and do what I'm doing, which is choosing the exotic tastes colorway and choose some colors to use on your next project. So I'm going to start with watercoloring this guy, this cute little rocket from Ellen Hudson. I just love coloring this rocket. There's just something about it. And I have this Prussian blue, which is the color that I have decided is the main blue. That's just my personal opinion. Other people will have their own opinions and I'm, painting in rather thick paint this first portion and leaving my highlight strips on either side and it's not like mass tone super dry paint but it's really thick and then i can go in with just water over top of those highlight areas and let them slowly blend in on the edges of them if they're too dry you'll get hard edges and they'll just never blend but I'm adding a little bit more down here at the bottom because I wanted to soften out those bottom edges and bring up the, the bottom edge of that, that little blend down there. So just be careful when you're doing it not to let it dry too much and keep that paint wet enough that it'll move, but not so wet that you lose the highlights. So I did a little matching strip down there at the bottom section. And another color from the Exotic Tastes colorways is Quinn Gold which used to be in my palette and isn't anymore. And I realized, man, I miss it because I love the range you can get from it. You get that really intense orangey brown color in the center to a super pale yellow. 
I mean, it just has a really broad range of, of really pretty colors. So who knows, that might come back to my palette someday. And then there's this Bordeaux. I just suddenly discovered Bordeaux when I was doing this. That is one of the things you learn from trying different colors. I was trying to match particular colors in this wacko colorway that Pantone suggested. And I don't agree with their color selections. They're not colors I normally would use together, but it got me to pull out my dot card so I could swatch a little bit of that Bordeaux for my chart. And then for this, this little bit of fire and my little, my little eyeballs got all excited and I went and ordered a tube of Bordeaux so that I could have it and play with it and paint with it because it's a really pretty color. I didn't even realize that until this moment. So that's one of the things that you can get out of using wacko color combinations that you just, you don't know what's going to happen if you do it, but I recommend it. And there are all kinds of trend websites and trend color books and stuff. When I went to the paint store to get some paint chips, I picked up all their color trend books. So I'm going to try using some of those color combinations this year. So you might see those here on my channel in the future. Because, you know, if I'm going to find a color like Bordeaux and get excited about it, then maybe I'll find other things too if I start working with other color combinations that are suggested elsewhere. So that was watercolor. This is watercolor pencil. And notice, of course, that watercolor pencil generally comes out lighter than watercolor. You can't mass tone watercolor pencil in one go. You have to add it slowly and build it up, which for a lot of people is really much safer than going in with really strong color at the beginning. So that can be a good thing. So I've got it all watercolored out and I let it dry completely before adding more pencil. And now all of a sudden I'm back to that nice, rich, deep, dark, really intense blue. And sometimes with a, when you go over something like this, it's just the paper is primed to receive more color. And sometimes I think it's just that now you're not seeing white paper through all of that color. You're seeing the blue underneath. So it just, everything just starts to get darker as you put layer and layer on top of it. You could also use other colors to make it darker, that sort of thing. But I just stuck with, for the sake of simplicity, using the same color and making it richer and darker. This one is done in colored pencil on some Desert Storm cardstock and just letting the Desert Storm be the highlight that gets left behind. And I'm using some blending solution and a blending stump to smooth out the color and intensify it. So there's the finished watercolor version. Put it on a red card base, which pulls out the red details in there from that Bordeaux color. This is the watercolor pencil one after I got the colors enriched and the, the blue background for that one really works nicely. And then Craft on Craft makes a really nice simple card. And then this last one is a Copic version that's over on the video that I made for Ellen Hudson. So you can go check that one out and make yourself one of those classic blue charts. That is a chart that you can make. It's a much easier one to do than the ones that I showed you today, but you can print out the ones that I showed you over on my blog. And then you can have them to put in a reference notebook to give yourself ideas for the next time you run out of colors and need a new combination. So which one of those colorways are your favorites? Which one should I try next? Leave a comment in the doobly-doo and I will see you again very, very soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.